Uh, friends, good evening to all of you. <laughs> you know, I had a nearly one hour, four, 50 minutes travel from Raj Bhavan to you after a lot of work from other places. I was thinking what to talk to you. I made a big lecture I have made for you. But when I see the composition, what you are, and you are in the festival mode, technical festival mode, I am thinking uh, what thoughts I can share with you. First, uh, first of all, I am in IIT Bombay. I know Professor Devon Kakar, Director IIT, and the Dean Professor Ye Yajnik, and all of you friends, faculty, and the students of IIT Bombay, <coughs> and also from various parts of the country, students. And uh, I'm indeed delighted to be with all of you, and uh, particularly at the inauguration of uh, Technical Festival 2015 at the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. Mumbai. I would like to congratulate the students and faculty members of IIT Bombay and the occasion of TechFest, and all those who have contributed for building a robust framework in generating quality human resource in the nation, particularly from IIT Bombay, my greetings to all of you. Of course, I am very happy to be to the campus of IIT Bombay, a number of times I visited here. Uh, shares a glorious history, IIT Bombay. Uh, long, long back, it, it was founded in 1958, I understand, and second IIT in the country. In the global ranking, IIT Bombay has emerged as India's uh, very top university. Over the years, the institute has also created a place for its innovative short-term courses through continuing education and distance education. So friends, I congratulate the past and present leaders of this great place of academic learning for their role and contribution writing human history. The topic I have selected for the next 20 minutes, I am going to talk to you, World Vision 2030. World Vision 2030, empowering 3 billion, nearly half the population of the world. Uh, but, uh, topic is World Vision 2030 empowering the 3 billion. Okay? Topic okay? <laughs> okay. Now, friends, I have, I have got a new mission for all of you. Such a gathering, I am mostly from IIT Bombay and in different parts of the country, engineering students, science students. I have a mission for you. Uh, this mission, one day will become a national mission. We are all, I, some of us working with the, for that. Uh, <coughs> you see, just in the morning, I coming from uh, a 22nd Children's Science Congress in Mumbai University campus, I was there in the morning. I was discussing with a group of children when one boy asked me, Kalam, I have read that in your home at Rameshwaram is solar powered. Of course, the boy says, of course, it's clean, but it's costly. And also, is it safe? And he asked me this question. I answered, necessity drove me to see my home is powered 24 hours. Because my brother is, uh, just few days back, he became 98. A uh, 98 man, you know, I have to, he should live comfortably. And the home should be comfortable. He should not experience power shortage. That's why I, I went for solar power. Yeah, three, three kilowatt capacity. And of course, first two years, the requirement of power was very high. 
Now, after three years of operation, we have put LED type lighting, and hence the power consumption has uh, come down. And uh, what I am proposing to all of you, friends, is a mega program to make India get away from costly fossil fuel towards solar power. Solar free power. Only eight hours free power. You can do it 24 hours also if you put a solar power satellite at geosynchronous orbit, 30,000 kilometers at the above the Earth. Now, what I'm proposing to you, friends, is a mega program to make India go away from costly fossil fuel, what we are spending nearly 70 to 100 billion dollars, and towards solar power. Of course, microgrid will be used in every street and even villages, and then exclusive solar power grid will emerge. So I visualize in a decade to 15 years time, India should become all her 200 million houses. You know, each house, five people, father, mother, three children minimum. So I have, I have, I have vision that 200 million houses should be solar powered. When I'm here with you engineering students, and professors from IIT Bombay and other engineering colleges from India. I thought of sharing a thought with all of you. First, as you all know, India is the emerging economic entity. One day, in a few years, it will come. Economic entity is the third, year, third place it has got in the purchasing power. Our per capita energy consumption currently stands as 565 kilogram oil equivalent, kg is called KGOE. That is 565 kilogram oil equivalent. This is a figure which is expected to increase significantly with the economic expansion and the economic growth in the country. If we com compare developed economies, then an average US citizen consumes 7,000 KGOE, 14 times of an Indian. An average UAE citizen consumes 8,000 kg OE, 16 times of the Indian. And an average Singapore citizen consumes 6,000 kg OE, 12 times that of an Indian. Hence, it is clear that in the near future, our energy demand will significantly increase. While it may not reach the level of developed world, it will certainly increase by factor at least five times. In such a scenario, how will you ensure that the future energy needs are met in a green and clean way? What should be our innovation, ideas for such a mission? Let me discuss a one such an idea. The mission could be the domain of home-based solar panel, where close to 200 million Indian households can be used to unleash the potential of solar power in the nation. With the highest solar irradiation among the BRICS nation, India can emerge as a leading emerging nation re relying on the power plants based on the individual houses. This mission can even go to the rural areas which are off the grid and usually signal floor, hence with the ample rooftop space. We need next generation entrepreneurs who can create a new thatching technology which can integrate rooftop solar generation and collection. My expert, expert, expert friends tell me that rooftop based solar power is an opportunity worth of $100 billion and with a potential gener generate of 100 gigawatt of additional power within the next half a decade, enough to meet all our additional power demand. Let us go even step further. We can create a national mission for electric power vehicles, EPV, which can be charged at homes using the energy from solar panels. In this way, if each house can 
charge one vehicle, we can save 130 million liters of petrol and diesel, leading to the saving of 350 million tons of carbon dioxide in atmosphere. About eight trillion dollars in oil exp rupees, eight trillion dollar rupees in oil expenses in India, we can save. My expert friends have calculated that if the environmental cost and oil cost factors, then the cost of solar panel can be covered within two years for each household. Now, this point I thought I must share with you. That is, you will become, because you are young fellows, young boys and girls, grown up, and you should become the ambassador for solar power mission for the country. Will you do it? Will you do it? Yeah. Now, you definitely, at this mission, two things will happen. Solar power mission is not only you are, you are having a clean power, our most of our earning in foreign exchange. 90% of our foreign exchange goes for importing the oil. Importing not only the oil, CO2 also, carbon dioxide also. Because every liter, liter of petrol or diesel generate 2.2 kilogram of carbon dioxide. So friend, that's why I thought for such a fantastic dynamic crowd, one end to another end, completely filled up. And I am sure your director, Devang, Professor Devang, will have another big auditorium shortly. <laughs> now, friends, I, I want to talk to you. This is based on my teaching abroad. And also in India, I have uh, studied the dynamics of a global manifestation. Dynamics of global manifestation. What is dynamic of global manifestation? The world, as you know, is integrately, integrately, integrately connected through four rapid connectivities. They are environment, people, economy, and ideas. So four, four connectivities, four rapid connectivities, we are connected throughout the world. They are environment, and anybody can damage the environment. Any nation can improve the environment also. They are environment people, economy, and ideas. We all know that global warming and climate change are no longer problems of an individual nation. They are planetary problems. That is collective problems. In the present time, a single product may be made out of components sourced from multiple continents and provide services to market far off from the place of the origin. This I have seen. We also saw how the economic turbulence originating one part of the globe shook the whole world. The world today is concerned about the growing inflationary pressure, recession, and potential fall in growth rates, affecting valuable efforts on development. We witnessed how a volcanic eruption in an island country in 2010 brought the entire airline industry and more than 5,000 commercial flights to a halt. And the 2011 earthquake followed by tsunami has changed the concept of safety and security of an island nation. We recently saw how more than 20 nations were involved in search and rescue mission for the missing Malaysian airliner, MH370, a few months ago, and again, Air Asia flight 8501 some days back. Of course, they got it. Now, at the same time, advances in transportation have progressively made movement of people across the nation regions more feasible. This has led to the globalization of expertise and talents, which can flow seamlessly from one nation to another. This also has led to the globalization of human diseases in, re in most recent uh, instead of being a different kinds of uh, flu and uh, in Africa oriented Ebola, which rapidly spread across the globe and threatened the entire humankind. Similarly, ideas and innovation, which you are the source, you must be the source, 
They, similarly, ideas and innovation are no longer geographically or politically confined. An invention made today somewhere takes no time to find its market thousand miles away or thousands of kilometers. The expansion of information communication technology and the convergence of technological tools are structuring new world knowledge. There, problems of one part of the world can be solved by multiple experts based at different points of the globe. Seamlessly, flow of information and people also mean the local or regional issues will invariably gain global prominence and the unaddressed problem, including poverty, can mutate rapidly into global terrorism, which we are also witnessing. This flow of ideas has led to the increasing importance of global human rights and propagation of an idea of democracy. Let me recall one personal experience. When I was traveling towards uh, USA nonstop flight about 14 hours, I was told that much of its control were software driven and most probably developed in India and some other countries. When I presented my credit card, I was told it was being processed in the back end server located in Mauritius. When I walked into a multinational software company in Bengaluru, I was fascinated to find the truly presented multicultural environment. I was fascinated as uh, a software developer from China, working under a project leader from Korea, working with a software engineer from India, and a hardware architect from the US, and the communication expert from Germany, were all working together to solve the banking problem in Australia. When I see, <laughs> friends, when I see all of them working together like one family, forgetting about the culture from which they came or the language they speak, I feel, you must also feel like that, that the only hope for such borderless interaction to continue is inculcate the spirit of borderlessness in every human activity in our planet here. Now, I want to share with you what are the breakthroughs which impressed me in 2014 and we are close finding a cure for diabetes using the human embryonic system cell technology, one of the things that impressed me. As you may know, beta cells in pancreas produce insulin and the destruction of the cell causes type 1 diabetes. But so far, the efforts turn embryonic, embryonic to stem cell into beta cell proved to be a frustratingly slow. In 2014, two studies revealed show that uh, enough beta cells can be produced in a less than two months to replace beta cell seen in the body. Of course, before being used, the, ca the factor of beta cell deaths have to be identified. Why? But scientists are confident that within the next two to three years, we will have finally found a permanent cure for diabetes. Hence, this is a convergence of uh, between two different medical sciences. Now, let me discuss second event, which is convergence between space sciences and tradition of uh, tradition, uh, space sciences, traction, and rocket technology. In two years last year, the first time ever in the history of mankind, humankind, a man-made object landed on a comet, as you all know. The Rosetta spacecraft finally reached 67B, it's called, its destination in August after traveling 6.4 billion kilometers after a chase of 10 years since it was launched by the European ESA space agency. Last month, Rosetta deployed its probe called Philae. The comet has quite low bulk density, something in the region of 300 kilograms per cubic meter, which means that if you put the object in the ocean, it will float. Though the landing was soft, Philae came to rest on, the, on its side and bit of actual landing spot ensured of a glyph and went to rest as its batteries could not be charged. But it did manage to send some vital data. Nearly 80% of scientific data is expected to come for a research that reached the comet in August. 
and it has been orbiting since then. It is orbiting at altitude of 10 kilometers from the comet's surface and has already transmitted a massive amounts of data. Taking all this consideration, it was chosen as the top breakthrough of the year 2014. This could, that has be our future exploration, deep space, and combating dangers of meteor strikes on the planet Earth. Third event, as so, so far I talked to you two events, the third event is related to computer science and neurology. In 2014, computer engineers at IBM and other companies took a leaf out of human brain and designed a neuromorphic chip that can process information in a manner similar to human brain. This means that unlike the way today's computers carry out logical operation, but a struggle to integrate vast amounts of data. But our brains don't face the difficulty. We seamlessly integrate vast amount of data collected from the diverse sources to build the final product by parallel processing. This becomes possible as individual neurons communicate with their neighbors to enable parallel data processing. The new chip with the brain-inspired computer architecture powered by unprecedented 1 million neurons and 256 million synapses true north it's called, mimics the brain, but a very small scale. You can't fully think of a brain. It's a small scale means 5.4 billion transistors and 256 million synapses. The brain has got 100 billion neuron cells and 100 trillion synapses. It only consumes 70 milliwatt during real-time operation. Orders of magnitude less energy than traditional chips. Friends, do you see how such convergence of technology? So when you all move out of the campus, technological campus, you will find, you will see how convergence of technology is shaping 21st century research and science. Let me elaborate further. As you all know, the information technology, communication technology have already converged leading to information communication technology, ICT, which well known. The information technology and the combined with the biotechnology is to the bioinformatics that also you know in the campus you know. When nanotechnology, when nanotechnology ICT meet, what is called integrated silicon electronics, photonics are born, it can be said that material convergence will happen. Convergence of bio nano info technologies can lead to the development of nano robots nano robots when they are injected into a patient my expert friends say it will diagnose and deliver the treatment exclusively in the affected area then the nano robot get digested as is a dna based product i saw the product sample one of the laboratories in south korea where best of minds with multiple technology work with the target of finding out out-of-box solution. Now friends, I would like to share my experience in Harvard University. Conversion of science is reciprocating. Conversion of science is reciprocating. Let me give an example. Recently, I was at the Harvard University where I visited laboratories of many eminent professors from the Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. I recall how Professor Hongkun Park showed me his invention of nano needles, which can pierce and deliver content into your individual target cells. That's how nanoparticle sciences are shaping the biosciences. On the other hand, Professor Vinod Manoharan of Harvard University showed me how biosciences are shaping the nanomaterial science as well. He is using DNA material to design self-assembling particles. When a particular type of DNA is applied on a particle at the atomic level, he is able to generate a prefixed behavior and automatic assembly from them. This could be an answer for self-assembly and devices and colonies of deep space without human intervention and as envisioned by Dr. A. Drexler. 
Thus, within a single research building in Harvard, I saw how two different sciences are shaping each other without any iron curtain between the technologies. This is a reciprocating contribution of sciences to one another is going to shape our future and industry needs to be ready for it and the technology centers should be ready for it. Friends, as you, uh, are, you, are, you are ready being, I, I would like to say now a trend is emerging, new trend also emerging. The aspect being introduced is that of ecology. Globally, the demand is shifting towards development of sustainable system which are technologically superior. This is the new dimension of the 21st century knowledge society where science and environment will go together. That's the new age model. That's the new age model would be four dimensional, bio, nano, info, eco based. When technology and system converge, obviously, one important aspect is system thinking and the implementation. System thinking and implementation. Based on detailed discussion in many education institutions across the world and with many citizens of India, abroad from multiple organizations, discipline. I'm happy to present to you a distinct profile of the nation of the world 2030 as follows. You know, India 2020, vision for India. This is, a, this is a profile for the nations of the world for 2030, distinct profile of the nation of the world 2030. Let me present to you this visualization so that you are all young people and when you, you will dream not only India and also many nations together, of course, we have to depend on many nations, each other. I visualize a world of nations where the divide between rural and urban, rich and poor, developed and developing has to be narrowed down. Finally, that's the, that is the vision. A world of nations where there's an equitable distribution and adequate access to energy and quality water. Because every nation has got set an amount of water, and also energy, and we have to, together we have to work. For example, if you bore for solar power, then multi nations have to cooperate, particularly the, the solar power, sat in space solar power satellite system. The world of nation where the equal, equal de, e, e, equitable distribution and adequate access to energy and quality water. A world where core competitors from each nation identify Missions of synergization in core competitions of different nations lead to economic advantage and faster development of the society. A world of nation where all the students of the societies are important education with value system. A world of nation where affordable quality health care is available to all and cost effective. A world of nation where the governance is responsive, transparent and corruption free. A world of nation where crimes against women and children are absent, none in the society feels alienated. A world in which a nation is able to give clean, green environment to all citizens. Each nation cannot give. We have to work together. A world that is prosperous, healthy, secure, devoid of terrorism, peaceful, happy, and continues the sustained growth path. A world of nation with creative leadership who ensure effective mechanism to resolve conflict between the nation and societies in a timely manner, keeping overall uh, peace and prosperity of the world as a goal. To achieve such a big thing, the worldwide, now we need out-of-box ideas needed to meet the distinct problems of the nation of the world. Today, let me discuss one of the vision in detail with all of you, which is how to reduce the rural and urban divide across the world. Friends, more than 3 billion people live in the rural region and the empowerment of these 3 billion, which is my topic today, will be the basis of a discussion further. The empowerment of a rural regions of the world is critically important from the perspective of inclusive development, sustained peace and shared prosperity of the world. The untapped potential of rural population talent throughout the world will be the great treasure. Bridging the rural urban divide is closely linked with the mission of overcoming poverty and inequity. About 70% of the world extreme poor live in the villages, the rural areas. But that's not a complete picture. Driven by the need of the education, health care and better income, the rural population migrating to urban areas throughout the world with the hope 
to get a better chance to opportunities, often meeting with the despair. This is further contributes to urban poverty as well as leading to stress and societal turbulence. The rural areas of the world occupy a position where there are unharnessed resources and potential, they have a youth and traditional skills. They have to be nurtured and value-adding enterprises needed. How can such a mission of empowering 3 billion be realized? It would then require out-of-box thinking and ideas previously unconceived. We could need to evolve a sustainable development system which brings sustainability and empowerment together and deliver an entrepreneurial manner. I and my team have been researching and evolving on ideas empower these 3 billion citizens of the world, understanding the challenges, exploring solutions to them. This recently took the shape of the book and a good, good book, sell, selling book, the target 3 billion. Now, target three billion, the challenge is bigger trends. The challenge of empowering the next three billion population of the world has multiple dimensions. Let us discuss four major such trends which will emerge the need and, and address. Number one, new consumption. If growth and development should reach the next three billion, it will bring about a colossal shift in the consumption pattern pushing the new demand for products for unknown to half of the humanity. For example, the current consumer expenditure per capita is about $800 for India, $1,500 for China, $6,000 for Brazil. Compared to that, the same figure for USA is about $35,000 per capita and for UK, $22,000. It is further estimated that a person born in 2009 in the emerging economy will, 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 will consume roughly 35 times more in real term than a person born in 1979. This is bound to create a demand for a fresh set of products, services, which suit the local needs and context. That's why IITs play a very, and engineering college play a very important role. So friends, this will also include human development sectors, such as education, healthcare, and where we are already seeing rise of distance learning, non-cognitive abilities, and generic medicine. The three billion empowerment needs to be innovative to suit local context and communities. Energy, next area of energy. The development is a direct function of energy. And societies are empowered, their demand for energy is bound to escalate. Global energy demand is expected to go up to 44% by 2030. India's own power consumption is expected to triple 600 gigawatt and China is expected to consume 1,600 gigawatt by 2030. This is going to be met with shrinking natural resources. So the challenge here, the emphasis has now shifted towards new renewable sources such as nuclear and uh, thorium based, wind, solar, geothermal, hydrogen fuel, biofuel, tidal power. Global societies need to realize that the energy sources of the yesterday are simply not going to work in the future. Now that the three billion empowerment needs to be creating new avenues to service the global energy demand. Now, the third important thing is the environment. It is well established that the ways of currently developed societies are unsustainable for the planet here. In fact, our estimate indicates that if all the three billion underprivileges are made to live at the same level as the currently developed societies, we would need roughly six new planet years to suffice for the resources needed and the absorbed waste generated. Even today, we are generating over 30 billion tons of carbon dioxide in the worldwide, and it is expected that if current trend continues, the planet here will be irreversibly harmed beyond 2030. So, friends, finally, the social conflicts driven by increasing economic gaps, fundamentalism, resource quest, historic differences, there has been a steady increase in the global conflict since the Second World War. While the number of interstate conflicts has been relatively constant since 1946, the number of civil conflicts has risen about three times, consuming large amount of resources bringing great loss of lives, especially in the developing world. Now friends, three, the 300 richest people in the world 
command more wealth than the bottom 3 billion people. Equity in opportunity, basic human development for all, conflict resolution mechanism at local level is the need of the world. The 3 billion empowerment needs to be equitable, just, and create opportunities for everyone. Now, in conclusion, we need quality leadership. What is the quality leadership? Where are they? Friends, I have seen three dreams in my life, which I have taken shape as a vision, mission, realization. One is space program. I was there with them 20 years. Another is the Agni program, DRDO, I was 20 years. Defense is a development program. And the third is Pura, providing urban amenities to rural area. Of course, these three programs are succeeding. In the midst of many challenges, and uh, yeah, it's a midst of many challenges, I have worked in all these three areas. I would like to convey to this young audience what I have learned on the leadership from these three programs. Number one, leader must have a vision. For example, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, he was our leader in space program. He can think of 20 years ahead a yeah, geosynchronous orbit in the 70s, geosynchronous, Indian geosynchronous satellite in the orbit. At that time, there was no geosynchronous satellite in the orbit. And leader must be able to travel in an unexplored path. And leader must have passion to accomplish the mission, like Metro Project in Delhi, Sridharan. Leader must be able to travel in unexplored. Leader never travel a path already made. Leader must be able to travel in an unexplored path. Leader must know how to manage success and failure. I, I have seen a failure. I, when the failure occurs, how you have to become a leader, and you are becoming the leader only when you how to when you manage a failure. Leader must have to must know how to manage a success and failure. Leader must have courage to take decision. Hundreds of decisions. Thousands of days in the, in the lifetime of a project, he must have courage to take, he or she should have courage to take decision. Leaders should have nobility in management. It's a big challenge. No, in management, you have to have a nobility. Every action of the leader should be transparent. Leader should work with integrity and succeed with integrity. That's the greatest part. 21st century leaders, creative leaders will have unique quality of int, work with integrity, and succeed with integrity. So I have been discussing these essential traits of creative leaders with people of eminent different areas and students from India and abroad. Apart from this, what is needed is the spirit among the young people like you, that I can do it, we can do it, that will transform into nation will do it. Our educational institutions have to concentrate on developing the leadership leadership traits, and the confidence to perform among every youth of the nation. This quality leadership will certainly empower the three billion people of the world with a sustainable yet development its focus. The Global Vision 2030 envisages the realization of a green, clean environment without pollution, having prosperity without poverty, peace without fear of war, and a happy place to live for all citizens of the nation of the world. What is needed? The participation of a multiple nation, multiple institution, and people from across the globe towards the common objective. IIT Bombay and all of you assembled here with global standards of research can definitely become a nodal center for provocating thoughts and action leading towards the realization of Global Vision 2030. My greeting and best wishes to all of you on the festive mood what you are all and may God bless you. <laughs> now, uh, friends, I can take you some questions, okay? The student community or any community, you can ask uh, any, any question from any, from uh, you can start from the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, down row, down row. Okay, all the rows are there. Anyone can ask questions, okay? Anyone. So you start somebody, okay. You 
If no question, I am going to ask you questions. Okay. <laughs> get up, get up. To go over, got a question. Get up. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, yes. Get, give a give a mic there. Yes. Recently, our Prime Minister has promised making India. So what is your view? Most of the time, we have seen the electronic gadgets you are exporting from the outside country. So can you give some hints making India? See, I have a feeling the, the all starts from the in system design, system integration, and system management. India is fantastic, okay? You could do a lot of work that we have proved in various systems. The problem is devices. We have to make devices. That too, in the lab level, you make devices. What we need is a fab, 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 lab, fab center, fabrication center. And this center come in a big way. And uh, sub-micron level should come. I am sure that is the starting point. We need an industry so that ideas generated by the laboratories can be converted. I saw in Taiwan recently one person, uh, the person who has built the biggest uh, industry, electronic device industry, and uh, definitely is possible in India to do that. The most important is device technology. Okay, sir? In design we can do, but we have a fab lab to convert a large scale. Okay, next question, next question. You go to next. Yeah. Next. Oh, yes. Sir, uh, my name is Anupama. I work with GE. Uh, my question uh, to you is, uh, how do you motivate your team and yourself to do the best things? Well, I have seen the motivation, your team. You see, it all depends on you, basically you, okay? So, what you do, what you do, what you guide, what you show the results, uh, finally will inspire the young members, the team members. So, you, you cannot expect without you showing the results, okay? It's a very important leader, some area, he should be uniquely placed person, then definitely you can, that is my experience also, okay? Okay, this side, this side. Now this side, yes. Yes, get up. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I have questions related to two domains. One is regarding energy. One question, one question you asked. Large number of people have got Okay, questions. sure. So, one, one question, is good question you asked. Uh, so one is regarding the energy domain. You said that India needs uh, solar microgrids. Uh, can you tell me what are the challenges we are facing in India, which, because solar microgrid is already implemented in European countries. So what are the challenges we are facing here? Sir, solar power, uh, it has not become an industry anywhere in the world. But they are making, they are making devices, systems, solar panels, all are being made, many countries. What I'm recommending is first time India should go for solar mission, solar powered houses, okay? Solar powered houses means India has got uniquely placed 200 million houses, 205 billion, okay, 200 million houses. So we have to start. Unfortunately, our radiation, uh, solar radiation, the highest sum of our region in India. So we have to use advantage and we have to go for a solar powered one. Of course, the device technology very important. Even 15% efficiency of silicon cell, uh, you can make it to economic scale. Large demand co cost will come down. Of course, that 15% can be by nanotechnology using, can be increased 35, 40%. Uh, efficiency is possible, okay? okay. This side, yes, yes, uh, get up last one. Middle, middle, ah, uh, yes. I'm yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Shout, shout. If white doesn't come, shout. Good, good evening. Yeah, 
See, I have a feeling the, the one of the very important, uh, important experience our engineering institution have to give to the young people that only employability is not only the government employability, okay, or industry employability. You can also become an entrepreneur, you know. That courage when you go out of the institution, the confidence that I can do, yes, a small three or four people can join and build a software, a hardware, and market it. So we have to become, instead of employment seekers, employment generators, okay? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. last row, last row, last row, shout. Mike is not coming, shout. What? What? What is the ma how you to become a leader? How to become a leader? Well, I have, uh, I thought I must tell you, the leadership, first and foremost, are generated by, by the type of work you undertake. For example, when I was in college, 90, long, long back, you are not even idea form, 1954 to 57, okay? 1957, I was in Madras Institute of Technology, Aeronautical Engineering. At that time, my professor, Dr. Professor Srinivasan, gave me a project, yes, not for, to me alone, seven more candidates and different subjects. So all the eight of us put together, we have to design a low, a low level attack aircraft. In six months time, we have to do it. And we worked very hard. First time he failed, then he criticized us. He said, I'm going to stop your scholarship and all. But we, I'm the leader of the team, but we worked hard. Finally, in six to seven months time, we completed a preliminary design of low-level attack aircraft. That, yeah, that project, bringing a multiple disciplines for a aircraft design in 1957, I created experience to a system design, system development, and system management we learned. This stood for next 60 years, this experience. So it had to start with the academic institution. Multiple disciplines are joined together. The integrated project should come in so the people know what the project, how to do the job. Okay? So. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Yes. So. Yes, yes. Shout. Where are you? Ah, child. Okay. 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 Shout. Hey. No, no, it's a bit louder. You speak. Well, I personally believe the, fortunately, you can learn, uh, many, many people learn to understand the technology. So, I'm, of course, you are blessed with some of the colleges, certain already language where technology you can easily uh, understand, go ahead with that. But most important language is, I want to tell you, understanding the technology, not only designing, you should know the development, you should know management. So all the three, if you couple it, then you will become a employable, become employable, okay? You ask your professor, he will tell you how to become employable, okay? So that means, okay, okay. So okay, next question. So next here, question. over here, over here. Excuse sir, me. Yeah. So, why not you send some mic? I cannot reach the mic. Hello, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes. So this is no, no, uh, that regarding guy, your that guy need a mic. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout, shout.
see i personally believe in the globalized world <coughs> 5 to 10% of the people educated people the going out it doesn't give me any concern because the year because they also earn the knowledge and after all globalized world <coughs> people will move uh, tomorrow many people will come to india also to acquire certain unique knowledge from us so i believe this movement should not concern us but what is important whoever abroad i think he should have that commitment that for its motherland he should have a commitment definitely most i have come across most of them have got a great commitment okay okay friends so towards your right sir. so the last question uh, yes i've been holding the mic hello for a long time. yes sir how Can did I you become you? so great how did you become how did you become how did you become so great <laughs> Well, years take care. Years, years, years take care of you. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello, sir. Here. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Sir, yeah sir, go sir, ahead. Hey, रुकना यार, please. Thank yes, you. Sir. Go ahead. So my question, sir, here. Bro, sir. बैठा यार. So my question is this that uh, I'm a, first of all I'm a student. Uh, my name is Nirnath. And uh, my question to you is this that you showed us the dream of. 2020 you showed us today the dream of 2030 my question is this that we are just common students i mean uh, i'm not even complete engineer i'm just studying what is our role in all of this i mean as a student how are we supposed to look at this things to constantly keep us motivated towards your dream your vision and which is also going to become ours one day see i have a feeling when i said the rural divide rural and urban divide has to be reduced minimized it needs electronics technology it needs civil engineering it needs mechanical engineering it is of all it needs social changes it needs so it's a multiple technologies needed for the 2030 mission for the for the connectivity of the for example you have to give physical connectivity electronic connectivity and knowledge connectivity bring the economic connectivity of the very villages for that every every area of science every area of technology has to work together okay, okay. sir one question so yes, one sir. question so how did you become so great <laughs> how did i become so great that's a question well which class you are studying fourth what's your dream in life i want to become a singer singer hindustani or carnatic hindustani or carnatic music any music yeah any music any music well i don't know how big <laughs> i don't know is you know is a relative terms so i personally believe you must have a dream say you must i must have a dream i must have a dream i must continuously acquire knowledge continuously acquire knowledge i must continuously acquire knowledge hard work hard work hard work and perseverance and perseverance one should not be af- i want not afraid of problems not afraid of problems that you will be successful okay <laughs> so, sir, sir. Okay, one question. So, wish you all the best. Sir, time. one question, please. Wish you, and uh, any question you put on me, any, because of time, what I suggest, a lot of people waiting, I suggest to you any question, you send a mail, APJ at Abdul Kalam dot com. APJ at Abdul Kalam dot com. If you want autograph also, you send. If you want autograph, <laughs> you will get. You will get autograph with photograph. and also answer to your questions okay wish you all the best sir sir, sir one question 